Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and welcome to this second video in the third series on expert primary maths teaching and this video is all about square, cube and triangular numbers. In this video I'll be explaining how we give children a really deep understanding of square, cube and triangular numbers, why it's important to think about these numbers as sequences, how we can ask some really challenging questions about this topic and I'll also be introducing the notation of square and cube numbers. So if you don't need this video, here's a skip link to your next video, which is all about large numbers. For this video, there aren't any videos you need to have watched already. It's a lovely fresh topic to start at this stage. So let's get started. So we have three topics here, square, cube and triangular numbers. Triangular numbers aren't actually on many curriculums, but to get a sense of these topics, it's really nice to cover all three because they're taught in the same way. And as you go through the processes of teaching these topics, children will get a deep sense of how sequences in maths are developed from patterns they can really imagine. So for each type of number, first of all, you need to get children building these numbers with apparatus. So for triangular numbers, we could do this with circles, with board magnets or squares or dots drawn on paper. Our first triangular number is just one. And with triangles, each subsequent row has one more object in it. So there's our second triangular number, which is three. Our third triangular number will have a third row of three squares. So our third triangular number is one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can get children building their own triangular numbers. You can ask them to try and find out which numbers can be triangles and which can't. Your triangles could be right angle triangles with the left edge aligned. That still works. It gives you the same result and it's nice to do. And similarly for square numbers, we want children to build the different numbers that can be square numbers. So the first one is one can make a square and then the next square will be four and then we get nine and so on with 16 and 25. And children should discover that the numbers in between these numbers can't be square numbers. They need to play around. If you give them 10 squares, can they make that into a big square? No. Well, it's not a square number then. And similarly, back with triangular numbers, we've got the same challenges going on. Now, what about cube numbers? How are you going to build those with dots or squares or magnets? Well, <laughs> if you find a way, please let me know. But it, I, I found it doesn't work very well. What you really need are some unit blocks like these and children can actually start to build cubes. And even if you're working at home, I recommend you buy a packet of these. They will come in useful again in work on volumes of cuboids and so on at this level. And of course, you could use them for factors and primes, as in the previous videos. So your first cube number is one. Your second one is going to be the cube with edge length two. So one layer of that cube will have four cubes in but you need two layers. So your second cube number is eight. And of course you can continue that exploring questions like, well, how many cubes would there be if the edge length was three? If you buy a packet of these cubes, it's about five pounds or five dollars or five euros and you get 100 cubes. So you're going to be able to build four cubes. And then by the time you get to your fifth cube, the bottom layer has 25 cubes in. And you need to reason that there are five layers. And at this stage, children should be able to build part of that cube and then think through, well, how many objects are there in the whole cube and puzzle that out. And similarly with large cubes. So a triangular number is a number where that many objects can be arranged into a triangle. A square number is a number where that many objects can be arranged into a square. And a cube number is a number where that many cubes, small cubes, can be arranged into a big cube. 
So our next step is to start to think about these numbers as sequences of numbers. So if we go back to our square numbers, then the sequence is 1, 4, 9. And after we've spent some time investigating individual square numbers, we can ask children to think about and develop the sequence. And I've seen some lovely work with children beginning to chant their square numbers because they're doing multiplications rapidly in their head. Children who are struggling with their multiplications will struggle with that exercise and will need some extra support with that. That can involve giving them a visual sequence with the square numbers shown like this. So they're starting to link that image to nine directly in their head as people chant it and so on. It's powerful support to give them. With your triangular numbers and your cube numbers, you don't really want children chanting those. Some can get going with triangular numbers, but it's not necessary because they're not a focused part of the curriculum. But it is nice to have a go at that with square numbers. And then we have some notation to introduce for square and cube numbers. If we think about three squared, it's notated like that. And children need to be able to puzzle out what three squared is. We want them to go back to their real objects or possibly work on squared paper to draw it and see it that it is. And we can count those if necessary. It is nine. Now, this notation is confusing for children. These small numbers, they will muddle them again and again and again as to what they mean. So a lot of practice is needed there. And we must always come back to these geometrical representations, the representation in patterns, or a lot of children will be lost. And similarly for cube numbers, three cubed, the little three shows cubed. We're actually going to build those with blocks until children are super confident. And you know that when they're not actually building something, they're imagining it in their head and it's just that they no longer need the objects. So that is going to be nine cubes on your bottom layer, three layers, nine add nine add nine is 27. And if they're describing it to you like that, that's okay. And if they're not, then they need to build those cubes until they are. Now, what do these little numbers mean? Well, they're about dimensions. So three to the power one, is just three blocks in a line. Three squared, well now we're going this way as well and we're filling in the rest of the blocks. For three squared, three to the power three, we're going up as well, the third dimension. And my ultra special treat for children at this age and at any age really you can show this film to really young children and to adults love it too is this film flatland that introduces the idea of dimensions it's quite difficult to get hold of a real joy it's only about half an hour long but don't think you'll be taking a break if you're teaching a class because you'll be absolutely entranced yourself it's just fabulous Okay, the next stage is to give children the sequences of these numbers. I've removed the drawings and the apparatus now, but they're in the background. Children can get them themselves and use them to explore these sequences. And we ask them, which sequence is which? Which is the sequence of triangular numbers? Which is the sequence of square numbers? Which is the sequence of cube numbers and why? So this is classic CVA, concrete visual abstract teaching. We've started with the apparatus, we're, we've drawn some diagrams and now we're abstracting to just the numbers. But the option to draw diagrams and the apparatus is still in the background and children should go back to them as much as they need to, to get their heads around what's going on here. Some vocabulary that becomes relevant at this stage is the word term. So you'd ask, what's the third term in that sequence. That one turns out to be the sequence of triangular numbers. So the third term in that sequence is the third triangular number. The third term in this sequence is the third square number. And the third term in this sequence is the third cubed number.
Now that's your core teaching of these topics at this level, but it's lovely to put in some extension and stretching questions. Lots of teachers ask, what do I do with my children who are just flying? And I'm going to put some ideas on that into most of these videos, but before I do, I just want to stop and say, the very best and most satisfying teaching is when you set extension and challenge questions, but some of the children who you didn't expect to fly with them really do. And it's not just your children who always fly who are just lapping it up. It's mixed attainment, stretching teaching, and it's so satisfying. And at the very least, you want the children who maybe don't do maths as quickly to have exposure to what the other children are doing. So make sure that conversations are overheard and where appropriate, your children who are doing some excellent work on the challenge activities, feed back to the rest of the class and explain what they've been doing. Okay, so if we look at these sequences, of course we can ask children to extend them, that's something they've done already, but for a bit more challenge, we could go straight to the 10th term in the sequence. Can they puzzle those out? There's lots of work in that and there's lots of ways of doing it and understanding. You can go up one term at a time to get there, but we're really starting to look for sneaky shortcuts. So with your square numbers, they may spot that the tenth square will be 10 by 10, so it's 100. With your cube numbers, your tenth cube will be 100 in the bottom layer and 10 layers. Therefore, it will be 1,000. The triangular numbers are really interesting because your 10th triangular number is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. As the children add together the different levels in the triangle to find the total number of objects in it. And there are all sorts of shortcuts to adding up those numbers. Some of them you imagine through the geometry of the shape in your head. You can imagine moving part of that triangle round and fitting it in and seeing the total shape. Do encourage that, do encourage them to move squares round, see what they can find. Build that triangle, see if they can move part of the triangle, fit it together and find a quick answer. But you can also see shortcuts here. So if we think about these numbers in pairs, 1 and 10 is 11, 2 and 9 are 11, 3 and 8 are 11, 4 and 7 are 11, 5 and 6 are 11. So we've actually got five pairs of 11. So the answer is going to be 55. And we can challenge our children with different results in these sequences. Could they find the twelfth result? If they've found a shortcut, could they explain that to the rest of the class? Can they find any links between triangular numbers and square numbers? I'll just leave that one hanging. If you want to talk about it, please add some comments here. Or come and join me on one of my live streams on a Sunday morning at nine o'clock British time. So your takeaways from this video are that children need to develop a deep understanding of the shape of these numbers, triangular square and cube numbers. And they must keep that imagining going on if they're gonna be able to reason and work at higher levels on this topic. And as we move just to numbers in sequences, they should still be imagining the patterns to support their thinking. We also introduce the notation for square and cube numbers, which you'll need to practice really frequently because children will forget that notation. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave me a like or a comment. If you've not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe so you can find it again. Please recommend it to your friends and fellow teachers or fellow parents or anyone else who's working with children on maths or anyone who's just interested to understand what goes on in primary maths. The next video will be on working with large numbers. Hope you'll join me for that soon. Bye for now.